Welcome once again to another Sons of Light production. You are with me today, Daniel Collier, and we are covering the book, The Sons of Light, Reason to Believe in How Satan Deceives the World. If you are completely and totally sick of this thing called the deep state, if you are tired of being deceived by the news and the next great false flag odd information, not understanding what's going on, uh, not being able to fully trust all the things you're being told in church about the Bible and where exactly we stand in the timeline. A lot of you are beginning to wake up to things starting to go on in the world and you're realizing that even the people you trusted the most are acting in a theatrical stage on life and fooling people into obeying their will. And it's time to wake up from all of this. What we are looking at today is reason to believe hiding the millennial kingdom, which we believe now that Jesus did actually return and kept his word and his promise. He said, some of you standing here shall not taste death till you see the return of the Son of Man. And the churches have been teaching now for about 70 or 80 years that the Bible is only relevant to this time and everything deals with us and Jesus is coming back now despite his words, despite the cover up of things like this, the building of these castles and massive structures we can't explain, nor can we recreate today. And it is written off as dismissive and we are told that they had ox carts and chisels and they just worked really hard and then the next cop out with this is slaves and we're not buying it anymore and so what's happened with this is as you begin to wake up to this factor right here which is the greatest of all uh, that has been waking people up you're beginning to realize that they have been staging everything on us. We're going to do a uh, review of this book because so many people have been asking about it and then a lot of people have been complaining saying ah, I'm not gonna read I'm old I'm not gonna read a digital book. Well here you go you're looking at it right now you can sit down on a computer and if you really want to know what's going on in the world if you want to figure it out once and for all stop being deceived stop getting poisoned to death by the foods you're eating, stop getting deceived into agreeing to certain laws and different things that are going on because you think this guy or that guy is a good guy. This is your decipher method. This is the way you can figure out and the secret coding they have been using to fool us, to fool us to comply. And this is both sides, uh, fake conservative and fake liberal. Here we go into the entrance here and the beginning of the book starts off and it uses just one of the what we call a I'm going to use this term fake flag that's not the real term but that's so the algorithm doesn't pick it up so anyway this particular fake flag begins with 9-11 and it exposes without a doubt that it was a, a created event around uh, black magic and false information and using numerology and uh, witchcraft types of things to fool people into uh, going to war and such. So as we begin, it starts off with uh, information here, such as George Bush has spent an uncomfortable day with his people trying to explain away why he failed to pass on warnings to the White House that he had received before September 11 that terrorists were planning to hijack American aircraft. What happened that day has cast a shadow on just about every area of American life. Now, one of the country's best known journalists has said that American response to the so-called war on terrorism has created a climate of effective censorship in a land that claims to be the home of free speech. This, my friends, was the beginning of the lockdown on free speech in the move that of the area that we are in now with the, the pandemic that took place. And this is almost 20 years ago. Uh, this book 
had begun at that time to try to warn people and it was it had to be pulled and kept hidden to this time because uh, the threats that were coming from the information it was exposing such as this is a supposed uh, passport that was belonged to one of the terrorists that after the towers exploded and the planes crashed in it, into them, uh, real or fake, this passport supposedly floated down through all of that uh, several feet of ash and rubble. And someone found it, uh, a news reporter or a policeman or something, found this uh, supposed passport <laughs> laying on the ground uh, on the sidewalk as evidence. And this was on the news. And this is something that you heard and probably believed it at the time because they were using trauma-based mind control to get you to believe everything and that emotional effect caused things to bypass your cognitive reasoning and it works every time except when you get this book and read it it will never ever work on you again so here we are we have Condoleezza Rice talking about how <clears throat> no one knew that this was coming and how would we ever know and uh, one of the quotes here by Condoleezza I don't think anybody could have predicted that these people could have take a plane and slam it into the World Trade Towers that was from National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice and then there were lots of warnings says Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld wow contradictory statements something you find in witchcraft to cause cognitive it's double-mindedness, cognitive dissonance, and cause people not to be able to figure out anything and just accept the Hegelian dialectic. So, again, we start to see uh, as these things tie all together, and I'm just highlighting because there is so much detail and so much information in this book that will reveal to you just how in-depth they have tried to do all of these things. <clears throat> So here we see on the dollar bill, Anuit Coeptus, Novus Ordo, Ordo Seclorum, which means our enterprise has succeeded, new world order, something none of us want. So they have an agenda that has been uncovered from way back, and you can find it in their writings. I'll give you a highlight of it. It is, Agenda 1 is to eliminate the belief in God, as we have seen happening in America. The second is to extinguish natural, national patriotism. The third, destroy the family as we know it. And the fourth is total deception on your mind. And the fifth is place the entire world under the dictates of one ruler or one ruling group. And this book will expose to you who that is. Funny how you can fold these uh our money and create secret encoded words how hard is that what is the statistical probability of being able to do some of these sorts of things so as we move on here here's some of the contents the contents to this goes through the meaning of it all how everything ties together since genesis to now then it provides evidence tells you whether evil will succeed, uh, why people are talking about UFOs, why that is coming into pictures. There's prophecies about this, how they rewrote history. What we think we know about history, the average normie out there, is not true, and you need to know the truth. Everything is hidden in plain sight. Once you understand the coding and the brainwashing, there is a false church, and you need to know who it is. There are gatekeepers. So when you go to search for information and begin your knowledge or searching, there are people out there called gatekeepers. And there is an easy way to identify them because they all slip up and they all eventually tell you a certain aspect of what they believe and where they get their information from. And this exposes them. But before then, they will have millions of followers. There is evidence for a creator. And I go through undeniable proof of this. Uh, there's historical evidence of things going on to prove this. Uh, there are gematria, uh, num numerical proofs of the Bible, uh, with it coded within the actual words, 
or is a whole nother book within itself impossible for men to write. And then it goes into information about proof, uh, uh, proof that Jesus was who he said he was, how believing God is a smart decision from a scientific uh, standpoint, and all these other things. It basically is proving God and trust in the Bible from a uh, from a statistical and a uh, logic and a historical provable uh, provable way in which you can then share the gospel with people. Uh, and when they try to give you counter narratives that they've learned throughout life, you have a counter to their counter that pretty much ends their logic based reasoning for rejecting God. And then they just simply reject them because they choose they choose to live their own life and follow Satan, basically. But they will not be without blame and it will actually cause many to turn and follow Christ. So. This right here is going through the, this part is going through from Genesis throughout a history timeline of how, a very brief timeline of how things move from where we are, I mean, where we were to where we are now and what the purpose of Jesus coming. And it's a lot different than most people think. And to the point now where we're in a stage of, uh, uh, a stage of deception and Satan's short season taking place now and fooling the entire world. So uh, that's the first chapter, taking you through the evidence and the reason we have moved through these stages from Genesis until this point right now. It is often different than what pastors and theological uh, students and people believe and have been teaching because they have been strictly following a protocol uh, of the Schofield Bible that just entered into the scene, let's say, 80 years ago, 70 years ago, about the time Israel was being formed. The uh, Rothschilds had this uh, uh, had this book uh, put into all the seminary schools in order to get Christians to support Israel, and they completely <clears throat> changed the uh, doctrinal meanings and understanding of the Bible uh, to one that becomes uh, pro-Israel and supporting supporting the uh, basically the rise of the scribes and Pharisees and getting Christians to support that and be Judas. Uh, this is a fact. You can look it up. Look into this Bible and how it got there. You will be absolutely shocked and it will change the way you think about things and the way you hear sermons from churches. So um, it begins off in chapter two to give you some evidence that the government, what we think is the government uh, or the deep state, which is exposed in this book, all we, they have plans and they will do mass events to get you to comply because they, they have to do trickery and witchcraft to get you into wars, to get you to comply to laws and things like that. There was... As far back as 1962, when Kennedy was in office, uh, there was a plan to get us in war. And they were going to stage uh, an attack in Cuba. So on March 13, 1962, Lyman uh, Limnitzer, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, designed a war plan called Operation Northwoods. Some of you have heard of this. And he turns it over to the Secretary of Defense, uh, Robert McNamara. Uh, its purpose was to stage a terrorist attack around Guantanamo Bay in order to create a means for military intervention in Cuba. So here was the plan that was laid out. All right, just to let you know, so we'll, I want to move on so we don't, because this book, there is a ton of information in it. So they planned to uh, land Cubans inside of the base and state um, American base, stage an attack, start riots at the gate, blow up ammunition inside the base, burn aircraft on the base, capture assault teams who are trying, that's our own teams were going to be captured, approaching from the sea, things like, uh, think, think of things that happened with like SEAL team and stuff, sink ships near the border entrance, our own ships designed by our own military uh, 
Joint Chief, Chief, Chief of Staff had planned this, bombed the base with mortar shells, staged funerals for mock victims. Is all, any of this sounding familiar, the things you've seen over the years now? Develop a terror campaign in Miami and other Florida cities. Have you heard this before or seen this? Destroy a drone aircraft over Cuban waters. The plan would be to put federal agents aboard a, uh, aboard a plane posing as college students on vacation. A drone plane in the Air Force Base would be painted and numbered as a registered passenger aircraft. The passengers would be left off at the base and the drone plane would be flown over Cuban waters. They would transmit a mayday signal before being blown up by remote control. John F. Kennedy subsequently fires Limnitzer. If you have never heard of this before, they had planned these sorts of things as far back as 1962. And if you haven't woken up to the fact that you have watched this same scenario from schools to buildings to mass shootings to whatever repeat it over and over and over again in front of you on the fake stream news and i have a to help you identify who is running all of this behind it controlling it we have a mini course uh, called the formula i suggest getting that as well and you can go through the formula but if you read this book you will easily be able to answer it but the formula helps you go through a Sherlock Holmes type of plan and figure out who the deep state is and how to identify them clearly or anyone trying to pull off these types of events. So moving forward, uh, anyway, I could spend forever on this going page by page telling you, um, but uh, anyway, you get to 9-11 and, and they had planned... They, they knew they wanted world change and they knew they couldn't get it without creating something as catastrophic and catalyzing, as you see here, like a new Pearl Harbor. And there you go, starts off the following, I mean, the, starts off the whole program that set the stage for where we are today and all the things we've been going through. And this part here goes through all the names that you should be familiar with as controlling mechanisms ruining your life and these sorts of things you need to know the definitions of all of these here as you can see on the screen um, so that you will not get fooled by what's taking place moving right along and we have this here you read on the screen i'm not going to read it out loud because the algorithm will pick it up and then you probably won't ever see this. Uh, it takes you through uh, why World War II happened and what the truth was behind all of it uh, and how the history you began learning around the 1950s and such up to this date was all created. It was all, it was probably... 99% fiction in order to bring us to the stage of the formation of the Middle Eastern country that causes us so much trouble. Oh, wow, look here. Here is a book written people never heard of before. This is what was going on in the 1930s with a certain group's plans to take over Germany and why Germany reacted the way it did was because it learned of a plot for these types of things. They knew what had happened in communist Russia and who was behind destroying that country and murdering almost 50 million Christians. And Germany didn't want it to happen there. And they formed a radical change. That is why World War II took place and all those things happened. We will move through this quickly. You can see what that's referencing to. Oh, what is this? Here's a news article you never saw. Wow, somebody declared war on Germany before Germany ever even entered in any kind of war. 
some international bankers plan to destroy Germany. Wow, I wonder if something like that is happening today. Here is the United Nations uh, poster for the for the creation of the United Nations building. It is a unfinished Tower of Babel. What was the Tower of Babel all about? And why are these upside down pentagrams circling it? Oh, there it is right there, the creation of it, the unfinished Tower of Babel. Who does the United Nations serve? Whoop! Our enterprise has succeeded. New world order on the money. Who snuck that on there? It wasn't always on our money. Moving through here. Why did they use 9-11? I have several pages of the Gematrian black magic used on 9-11. Because 9-11s in Gematria, 9-11s, and they, this is how they do stuff. Don't think it's a joke because there are thousands and thousands of illustrations of this. Because to them, this is what it's really saying in code, whether you know it or not. And every time you say this and talk about it, the event was set up this. And why do you think you call emergency system uh, is 911? Why do you think all of these things exist like that? Oh, here was our money during that time. How was it that this money was planned so far in advance in another form of witchcraft and gematria that it could be folded to show you the exact destruction that took place? This event and why do tarot cards have the tower crumbling? Why does the barcode have this as the main, the end, middle, and the end numbers on it. Do you think this is still an accident? Oh, look at this. Here are the towers crumbling down in the exact sequence from five to a hundred dollar bill. Accident? Nope. All right, moving right along. Here's Mr. Patriot right here. Uh, uh, I, I need to tell you that this information that I'm skipping past is full of mind-boggling things to know as well as you're reading this. I'm having to breeze through this as just a reference for you. Why is there gold fringe on our flags in the courtrooms? They're not supposed to be there. We're not supposed to be under military occupation. Why did the Patriot Act get formed? Well, that was for the reasons we're facing nowadays. Check out all of the, here is all the 911 things involved all the nines and elevens in the event that took place 20 years ago check this out flight 77 65 people six plus five is 11 flight 11 had 92 on board nine plus two is 11 you think this is an accident you think these numbers this was all real that these planes just accidentally all had this information that everything keeps adding up new york city has 11 letters uh how do you think this is all an accident we're getting into uh, super high levels of gematria and witchcraft and hundreds of years of planning for things. Um, 119 is the area code of I Iraq and Iran. Oh, wow. What is that? Backwards, you know, and 9, 10, 11, 9, 10, 11, 9, 1, 1. Gosh, how does all that happen, right? You think you know everything, right? People think they know what is taking place and they got a good handle on not getting fooled. Well, here is the former uh, head of planetary initiative. That means what they're planning to do throughout the world for the United Nations. This guy's name was David Spangler. No one will enter into the new world order unless he or she will make a play pledge to worship Satan. What? This guy is the head, the former head of planetary initiative. Wow, and he coming right out and say it. No one will enter into a new age unless he will take a Luciferian initiative. I bet you didn't know that when you heard on the television people talking about the United Nations. Here's some more. Here's Robert Mueller agreeing with all of this stuff. He created World Core Curriculum. This is something that goes through every aspect of human life and taking control of it including the education system, matching what this guy was talking about. 
And do you think that you knew this? Did you know all this? Do you think that you don't need to take time to sit down and maybe read this, even if it is a digital book? What are our kids going to learn? They go through that. What are the plans they have for you? What is UNESCO? Do you know what that is? How they planned it? Who was Alice Bailey? What is a Satanist, a new, uh, new agey Satanist who had huge influence over all the writings and the things that took place for the United Nations? And what did they plan? How did Madame Blavatsky, the founder of Theosophical Society, basically Luciferianism, how did she have such huge influence over the United Nations and the world core curriculum and the things your kids are having to learn in school? The things that took place with controlling our society 20 years ago, setting up the Patriot Act. What is going on to this very moment to the things you turn on television? Do you think you don't need to know this information and be able... This is why I have it in a digital form here so that you can just scan section of it. You've got that guy on social media and they're doing the normie talk or the ultra liberal talk where they're repeating some talking point from CNN or something or CNBC and they're like, meh, 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 meh. copy, a, take a section of this and blast it over to them, right? And say, here's the initiative. This is what's going on. Shut your pie hole. Because here's the truth. Here we go. What happened that caused us to get into wars? There's always some event they tell us that wasn't true. They don't mind killing off quite a few people, right? Here is the sinking of the Lusitania. That was set up on purpose. They knew about that. That got us into war. That got us into war. What happened... Uh, here's another thing. Look this up. You can find it in this book. What happened with the USS Liberty and Israel? There's an odd thing. There is a false Christ that is worshipped uh, throughout the United Nations. They call him Maitreya. This is someone we recognize as an against Christ. Maitreya. Get familiar with that. Um, and then here's some more stuff of the use of numbers and how they use gematria. Not knowing this will cause you to stay fooled your entire life because they are running programs based off of witchcraft and gematria. And some people, they're still like, meh, 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 meh. that's not true. Oh, that's hokey pokey. I don't want to hear all that. A lot of times you will find as well, uh, when you're pointing this out, a high level mason will be the one giving you all the scorn about uh, exposing numbers and the use of things. President Kennedy, Kennedy was killed according to cult, occult numerology um, and the signature of 11. We remember 11 from 9-11. He was killed in the 11th month on the 22nd day and on the 33rd parallel. He was killed in uh, the Del Rey Plaza and the most powerful and secret society in the world today, the number 11 is extremely important. It's a power number. And the master numbers are 11, 22, and 33. Funny that he was assassinated on the 11th month and the 22nd day and the 33rd parallel. Isn't that strange? The code 11, 33, and 22. Maybe you should be familiar with this. April 15th, and the day you pay taxes. That also is a significant number you should know about. April 15th, 120 countries signed uh, the GATT World Trade Treaty. Um, so Abraham Lincoln was assassinated on April 15th. The Titanic was sunk on April 15th. Do you think they're using code language and numbers? Do you think you need to know this stuff? Do you think other people might need to know it so that the world doesn't stay deceived? Do you think this book, this course, is important for you to know what got us into World War I? It goes through and explains that. Let's get moving here now so we don't stay so long on 
on this certain subject. Why are all these transvestite things being pushed in schools right now and transhumanism? Oh, there is a tie to that as well, and you need to know it. It may not be what you think it is. Why is this group of people all in charge of every single, every single group, corporation, and such that is doing things that you disagree with, that you might find inhumane or uncivil or producing things uh, in the media that seems to be against God. Isn't that strange? I think maybe you need to know about it. Not all of them are involved. I'm talking about the high-level people. So here we're going to move past this subject because that is something that will... Uh, cause this not to get seen on this platform. Planned Parenthood, what, how did it originate? What was the tie to Sanger and the Nazis and the Birth Control League? You might want to know that in your decisions of whether you think abortion is uh, actually for women's rights or was it created as a form of human sacrifice? What was the connection between Churchill and uh, Stalin and Roosevelt. What was the connection between all of these puppets? How did they end up getting us in war? I'm not going to talk about that. You can just look at it. I'm not going to mention that. What is the connection between these things? You need to know. Um, Here's a statement, remember this, out of the Roman states, there is no country where I am Pope, except the United States, Pope Gregory. America is the hope of Rome, and Rome doesn't necessarily represent at all Protestant Christianity. Why would he make that statement? What is it that you don't know? Here's some more information about New World Order stuff that ties to what is, why is John Kerry, John Hines Kerry, doing with Anton LaVey at a fundraiser for Satan, Satanic Church? Isn't that weird? And there he is with uh, a Catholic priest. What is the connections to all these things? And why were all the sixes? I think that's Act 66666. Accident? Just a coincidence being shown here. Why do all of the world leaders in front of you do this hand sign right here? All of them do this. It's, it's the same hand sign that is done at the rock concerts for the like satanic bands. You think it means I love you? No, it does not. It does not mean that. So more information, more information connecting to all of the strange, all the world leaders going and kissing the Pope's hand and what the connection to that. It goes into UFO stuff, what it is, what you don't know about it, why it's being pushed, why fake space is being pushed. Need to know all of this because this is part of the agenda, very in depth. What's the connection to the things going on? It had, I had a lot of information going through here about Bohemian Grove things at that point in time. People don't seem to care, but it does have a connection now. I also go into uh, gematria and glyphs and mind control stuff that you don't think affects you, but evidently it does. And if not, they wouldn't be doing it. And which companies absolutely use, there are thousands of them, by the way, this particular number and encode it and hide it right in their logos. And it's not a coincidence or accident and we're not seeing it because we want to see it. Oh my goodness, here's Disney and why would they put that in there? Oh, that. so this is an accident, that is an accident. Why does this say sex in the stars? That's an accident. Um, why is all this stuff dealing around Harry Potter? Why, why did they do that? All of this is all of this is explaining the information here about mind control and the television. This goes into music just as in depth. Uh, music is used to brainwash you. 
very important information. Whoa, here's Bono doing that same hand sign. He loves you. Right, he doesn't have any con Oh, and here's the Beatles. The Beatles had Aleister Crowley, the wickedest man who ever lived. He called himself the Beast. He brought back modern, or he brought back the old ways of doing black magic. And here's the Beatles doing that hand sign. And they had him on Sgt. Pepper's uh, album cover because he was one of their heroes. And here's Kiss, of course, doing the hand sign. And talks about all these bands and how they came about and the formation during uh, that time period. Uh, the connection to Beatles and Aleister Crowley. It, the connection to the, uh, the CIA at that time and the beginning of it connection to the church whoa what's that symbol in the background right there why is that symbol that same symbol on our dollar bill about new world order stuff isn't that weird why are why are all these saints and people always put in these cave things like this what what kind of sexual orientation or strange thing does that mean you find out in this book um why the push for the LGB movement? Where does that come from? Why is it being so heavily pushed? Lots of information on that. Um, why was it put in TV so much? Many years ago it started heavy push in the 90s. Um, what does the news have as connection to all of this? And how are they being used? Uh, things you need to know. Why is the false? Uh, why is the... Uh, thing with the UFOs coming up. Why did they come out just recently and say, why, yes, after 20 years of threatening people, threatening to kill them, um, uh, gaslighting them, uh, making them look like an idiot in public, and now all of a sudden the government comes out and said, oh, yeah, we even have footage. Here's some footage one of our planes took of a UFO. Now they're coming out with it and saying it exists. What are they planning? Here are pictures of giants that were discovered in walls. Why was the Smithsonian formed? And where did all these bones go after they discover them? Everybody's like, oh, Photoshop. Well, of course, they're going to come out with fake Photoshop ones to cover up for the real ones. Because even Abraham Lincoln talked about and said that there were giants and giant bones discovered. Why would he mention that, mention that as far back as in the 1800s if it didn't exist? Here are some strange anomalies found. We read in the book, in the Bible and Greek uh, writings, and to the Greeks, their teachings were not mythology. It was history to them. And here are some uh, giants. It appears to be frozen in time. Here is another one. There is these things all around the world where it appears something turned these like Medusa type thing turned giants to stone isn't that strange going back in history it talks about what angels are able to do and not do need to know about that more information on the UFOs and uh, the ancient paintings that depict the chariots of the angels and how possibly angels traveled maybe in these craft why they ended up in paintings like and in on coins how strange is that covered up we were gaslighted not to know what people knew for thousands of years why in this painting of Jesus on the cross is there two angels traveling in craft isn't that weird here they are many of these paintings need to read about this here is a bunch of these paintings with craft painted flying in the background surrounding Jesus having to do what all these saucers. Here's a <coughs> here's a saucer light beams coming down. Ancient astronauts discovered all of these cave walls, all this stuff. Ancient Chinese um, all. Here's a painting. Here's a UFO way back when in the background. Chinese paintings look here's a guy flying you think that's an accident you think people couldn't do that during uh, a certain point in time very strange right what are all of these ufos this is from gulliver's travels in the 1700s here's a drawing here he is wow how did did you know that in the 1700s people knew what a, a flying saucers looked like i bet you didn't know that check that out whoa what is this 
that the Navy has admitted caught on camera from a jet. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Need to know about this and read about this in the book. This is good evidence when you're arguing with somebody or trying to tell you why did they use all of this in the movies, gaslighting you, making it out to be cartoony stuff. It was done on purpose. You need to know about that. Here's just more information. How did the Germans back engineer, what was their connection to uh, contacting other entities to learn how to build these things that actually flew and existed? They did. Check these out. Here's pictures right here of these German craft flying. Doesn't this right here look exactly like what we saw? Here's a picture, and this looks exactly like what was painted in that old painting, doesn't it? Isn't that strange? Here is something that was caught from the space shuttle. Uh, images, when zoomed in, these things were flying all around. They look like you would think they were jellyfish or something, but they move and turn. What is this doing moving around in outer space? That's weird, right? Here's some more stuff caught on camera. You need to read about this. This is stuff the Germans built. This isn't a hoax, that's real. Here it is flying. Need to know about all this, the connection to all of this type of stuff. Why does NASA use all of this encoded strange pagan symbolism stuff? I thought we were a Christian country. Why is all that in there? Need to know about it. Then we get into prophecies about uh, prophecies about world events from the Bible and things that tie in so that we can recognize fully from the understanding that this book reveals. It opens your eyes so that you can look at prophecy a different way from what we're being fooled into. Why is these Masonic handshakes and stuff on this church? It's not supposed to be there. You need to know about all of this stuff here. Watchful eye and secret sec security cameras. And why is all this same symbolism? Why is this symbolism from a certain group uh, all morphed into our society. Here is symbolism from everything that you look at every day, corporate logos, Time Warner, here's the eye. Why does why does Dodge Ram have a ram's head, but then it has the goat? Why does the ram have a goat inside of it? And you look at it every day and not see it in coding. Why does Lucius, which used to be Lu Lucifer, why is it a 666? Geez, I wonder why they, why does Lotto have 666 on there? Isn't that, there's the all-seeing eye. Look at it every day. Oh, you know, you look at this, but what did it used to be? Seems like kind of a sex symbol or something, right in your face, kind of pornographic. Why does Time Warner have this, there's the eye and this kind of spirally six, why is that there? And the sun symbols here. Why is this stuff evil eye? More of triangles and eyes. Isn't it weird? Why does two snakes? Why is the snake encoded in this here? What's that mean? Here's here's this connection. Remember seeing this, and it's on our dollar. Why? Why? Way back in time, was Spock wearing these symbols here? What does that mean? Monster. There's the eye. Why? What does that got to do? You know, to put that in there, right? They make you think it's about this guy, but really it's something else. Once you know, monster. Boy, it had a lot of weird stuff in it. Once you go looking into it, why are the stars on the Republican elephant flipped upside down? The, and here's the Baphomet symbol. Why, why would that? That's not an axe. Is that an axe? I don't think so. Why is Fox News in Gematria? Why does that mean 666? What's the, what is going on here with sixes and stuff? Why does the Euro have 666? Is it an accident? I mean, are we living in funny world? Or is why do all of these things... Why do they keep creating all of this stuff with this symbolism right in your face and you look at it every day and you don't know it? Do you think you need to know this stuff and read about it a little more in depth and figure out that they're using not only their corporate logos uh, to sell things and make you recognize them, but they're actually creating emotional and psychological responses that affect you. And it's a form of witchcraft. I think you need to read about this and know it. This is why this book was important for you to know. And 
you need to learn about the Federal Reserve and all the weird stuff involved with that and how it wasn't fully voted on and it took away America freedom. And who is this guy here, Rothschild? I think we learned about Rothschild in the formation of a Middle Eastern country, didn't we? You need to know about that. Lots of information here to know about the connection with Epstein and a certain country and compromising all of our officials for the will of this certain country to control us. Lots of information here to learn how American history was rewritten, who might be behind that, uh, figuring out all of the original documents written to all the original um, our charters, all the constitutions of the states. Did you realize that the constitutions of the states, you not only had to be a Christian, but you had to be a Protestant Christian and swear an oath to even hold office. Why do you think they did that? Who by, who by, if, if you had a swear oath to hold office as a government official and you had to be a Protestant and a Christian to do so, then why were these intelligent people forming a government to protect the people and be by the people and for the people? Who were they excluding? It is an ex exclusive not an inclusive, it is an exclusive formation of government and freedom that, that made America great. Who did they exclude in order to keep us free? Why was it done on purpose? And if you back engineer that, you may be able to figure out historically what groups or people uh, work to take away your freedom. It's common sense. Martin Luther didn't like a certain group of people. wonder what he learned over time. He seemed to be pretty smart about things. Um, so, oh wow, who's controlling the Muslims and why are they doing a Roman salute, which also was a German salute? Why are they all, why is they using that hand symbol? Who's controlling them really? And we get into some scripture and things like that. Um, talking about the U.S. Constitution, stuff you should know, all important information. Um, the government is not separated by church and state according to legal things. Congressional investigation proved that some time ago. And we are only halfway through a megalith of information in this book. Uh, mind control and how they have used it to get you to not understand what's going on. I'm not going to go through this particular part here. That's pretty graphic. That's for reading only. You'll be very, very, very shocked about that. You'll be even more shocked about who controls that group and it's not who you think. All one group controls everything. Um, why everybody bows before this guy. Not me, buddy. Not me. More information covering all this is getting in depth, tying it all together. Um, and then uh, here's some oddities getting into this: how the CIA infiltrated 17 area groups and gave out LSD. This was way back in this when they started beginning the whole rock and roll movement. Why did the? You need to know why the rock and roll movement began and who orchestrated it because it was about destroying Christianity and wrecking America and turning it over to the system that controls it. Now, you'll learn about it in this book. You'll be able to explain it very clearly. Things getting into mind control within all of this. Uh, can't I can't talk about certain things in here. Um, that's why I'm skipping through stuff. Hiding things in plain sight, such as in advertisement. So, I was a marketing and advertising major in college, and I became an expert now on subliminal advertising and exposing things like simple as looking at a cracker in an advertisement, and then why do they implant all these words that say sex in the cracker? Do you think they're doing something to your mind? Things you're looking at every day. Whoa, why is stacking Pepsi cans? How did that end up saying that? 
accident. You think you need to know about this to keep from getting fooled and all kinds of stuff. Boy, did they encode a lot of this. Remember 9-11 is 666 and how come people are always born on 9-11 in the movies here? And this is going to have a whole list of movies and connections to all that. Why is the dates in this here keep saying 9-11? Isn't that weird? I wonder why their microphones say 9-11. Isn't that strange? It's an accident, right? How come in this writing right here at the top he's born 9-11? Isn't that weird too? Oh, the bomb's going to go off in 9-11 seconds. Oh, happy birthday, Adam, here in 9-11. Got appointments. Oh, it's all accident. Oh, watch out. The height is 9-11 on this movie. Martial law coming to you in the siege, 9-11. Isn't that strange? Why? In all of these old movies on the covers, did they have this symbolism here? Like a couple of towers. Oh, what? What's this here? No, is 9-11 on that movie? Why did the towers collapse in this? You stand there watching them. And how come the Simpsons predict everything? Everywhere. Remember, all over here is explanations in movies and connections to all of this. Uh, you can't get around it. It's not an accident or a coincidence. Oh, look what time it is in 9-11. Well, it's in the background. How come there's no 10th aisle? It goes right to 9, goes to 11. Accident, you know. Uh, you think all of this stuff is just getting in these movies and getting in these places for you to look at by accident. You think that this stuff here going back in night as far as 1979 do you think these advertisements going back 1968 do you think things haven't been planned by spiritual entities and humans who worship and follow this stuff if they aren't manipulating you and that as a christian and a patriot you need to know this stuff or do you think i'm too old i can't read a digital book I'm too old. I can't do any of that. That's fine. Be a normie. Keep being fooled. Go right on being you. Keep keep doing your things. Eat your fried chicken and macaroni and cheese. And then, uh, you know, be a normie. Think you're in the know. But this information is a must for anyone. So this gets into the connection of like some people are diehards and believing that a certain organization here is Christian. However, what is the symbolism of dying Jesus always kept on a crooked cross or whatever while wearing a fish god hat, Dagon hat? Why keep the world? It seems like if I was Satan, I would want to have the image of Jesus being killed as my national symbolism instead of his resurrection and dominance. Isn't that strange? That's what I would do if I was evil. Uh, this gets into some technical stuff about uh, things coming, like prophecy stuff right out in the open more. Um, anyway, there's all of this is full of full of information we get into symbolism that you look at every day and have no idea here's the washington monument it is a symbol of osiris's missing member um, and you figure out what a missing member is here in washington dc is this symbol right here which is the feminine right this represents the feminine see that why is why are, is your national monument a symbol of a missing member in the middle of the feminine? Oh, you think that's an accident, right? That's just a coincidence. Um, you're just looking for stuff, right? No, no way that that was done on purpose. And then uh, you need to know this right here as far as what's controlling the world. You need to know the connections between, hey, we're all in the same club. We're enemies, but in the same club. Isn't that strange? Oh, look at this at a satanic meeting. What hand symbol are they doing? It means I love you, right? Why the United Nations? Why would you have a 666? Why would you even put that up there behind this big meeting? Isn't it weird? Everybody's doing this hand symbol. Why are they doing this hand symbol album? Uh, satanic albums. There's a drowning priest. They're doing a symbol. symbol. Are they all in the same club? And do you think you can trust them? 
oh my goodness, look how many people. Even Spider-Man's doing this symbol. Why? Why? This is too much, right? Uh-huh. You need to know what each... There's thousands and thousands of these symbols. I can't go in. This is all technical stuff about the numbers, the, how they plan to take over America. You need to know the Bill of Rights and stuff. Uh, let's scan through here. We're going to get too long in information if you followed. Um, concentration camps in America. FEMA camps you don't even know about. They built a ton of these, like 600, and, I think there are 666 of them. Coincidence, right? I think this is the uh, Swift Luck Greens, the, this is the George Bush camp or something like that. How do you like, well, who are them camps for, right? Talks about the gatekeepers here and tells you how to recognize people who are pretending to be making you aware, pretending to be telling you about this kind of information I'm sharing with you, and then how to identify gatekeepers because they fool millions of people. They seem to be so, they know everything. They know everything. They know stuff that is impossible to know even. So, um, and you need to be able to recognize them because it's very simple and they always do some simple things to expose themselves. This is some older clothing that was out at the time and <laughs> Obey Propaganda was a very popular shirt at the time with Aleister Crowley's face on it. That was very popular clothes. People walking around wearing this wearing that energy on them. Uh, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm not going to, you can read about all of this, these shirts, very satanic at the time. And then the rest of the book goes in very technical detail um, about evidence for a creator. And as well, um, the expanded version of this book also goes very much in depth about exposing who this deep state is and um, the mud flood in millennial kingdom and most of you on this channel are familiar with that already but it goes into showing you the buildings um, the buildings that are uh, impossible for us to have built during the time uh, and how it had to be built by you know people that lived a thousand years or angels or something you know 600 room buildings with uh, marble floors that you couldn't move with ox carts and things. You need to know all of this stuff. Uh, you need to know the exposure of it. But the best part is it's put together in a way in which you can copy the information and share it with people on social media so that this you can't share the information in a book sitting on your floor. You can tell them about it, but being able to show people through imagery to prove certain things is what opens their mind to beginning of understanding. So I will keep this ending here. We have gone through uh, this book, a must read, a must get for every patriot and Christian called A Reason to Believe. And like I said, it also goes into the, the millennial kingdom of Christ already taking place as well as uh, the buildings that there's no way we created them, the information about why we can't even create them with our technology now, that we can't even move the stones, they're so large, and the um, information about the fact that there's no way that you could even feed enough people, house them, produce enough stuff based off of what we've been told uh, of infrastructure at that time. So the infrastructure had to be completely different. They lied to us about that. And it gets into the mud flood and the erasing of history to build up to the point we get now where they have an entire generation of people, who even Christians, who believe a certain narrative and base their beliefs and their scriptural beliefs off a historical lie, which changes everything about what they think they know. So this book, for anybody, at least once in a lifetime, you must get this course. You must get it and learn it to protect yourself and your family and to really know. Um, it doesn't cover everything because you would have thousands of pages of information about how they do everything. 
it's enough to unlock the secrets so that you can recognize everything that's going on now and not get fooled by things. So here we are. I've gone through this. It's reason to believe. I'll leave a link to it in the description. And this is why it is important to get this book, to learn about it, and keep it as a preservation for your family and your children to know so that generationally your family is not under this spell any longer. This is Dan Collier for the Sons of Light. Get your copy. Enjoy. We'll see you later.